Hi, in this problem we have a function f of x equal the arctangent of x over 3 and we want to find a power series for this function and we want to find the radius of convergence. So let's go ahead and work through it and note I have not done this problem so hopefully after watching this video um, you'll have some insight into actually how to solve this on your own. So the first thing you want to think about is the derivative of arctan. Recall that the derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, that's the derivative of arctan. So here, um, if you take the derivative of this function here, so if I were to take the derivative of arctangent of x over 3, this is 1 over 1 plus x over 3 quantity squared times the derivative of the inside function via the chain rule which basically it's really one-third times x, and so the derivative of x is one, so you just get one-third. So what we're going to try to do in this problem in order to come up with a power series for this is we're first gonna come up with a power series for this, okay, and then we're going to integrate it because if you integrate uh, this, you should get back the arctangent. That's the trick. Now, in order to come up with a power series, um, whoops, for this, my pencil's out of control today, <laughs> in order to come up with the power series for this, we're going to use a formula. So this is a formula that is typically given in most calculus books. So if you have 1 over 1 minus x, this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And this is valid if the absolute value of x is less than 1. And if you know uh, infinite geometric series, this is just an infinite geometric series here where r is equal to x and it converges to this if the absolute value of x is less than 1. All right, so we're going to apply this formula to this and then we'll integrate and we'll get this back and we should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down again. So it's 1 third, 1 over 1 plus. I'm going to go ahead and write this as x squared over 9. Okay, just because it's just easier, right? You square the x, you square the 3. And now we need to use this formula. So we need a minus sign, right? So watch this. It's 1 third times 1 over, I think this is going to work, watch this, 1 minus, I'll use a bracket, negative x squared over 9. Boom, see that? So now this thing here that I have put in these super fancy brackets is just our x. And so this is going to be equal to 1 third times the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity. And then it's going to be this to the nth power. So it'll be negative x squared over 9 to the nth power. Really cool, right? And this is valid if, okay, this is valid if the absolute value of negative x squared over 9 is less than 1. Okay, this is where we're going to get our radius from, so I'm just going to do a little math here. So um, the negative is going to go away, right, because we have an absolute value, and I can drop the absolute value too. So we'll get x squared over 9 less than 1. So x squared less than 9. Um, so if that happens, um, I guess you can say that x is between 3 and minus 3. Uh, so r... This is a power series centered at zero. So R is your radius of convergence. So it's this distance here. So R is gonna be three. That's gonna be our radius. Even when we integrate, the radius of convergence does not change. Uh, what, what can possibly change is convergence at endpoints. But the question is not asking for convergence uh, at endpoints or the interval, it just wants the radius. And the radius of convergence will never change no matter how many times you integrate or differentiate. So that's the radius. All right. So now we're here. I'm going to write it one more time down here so it looks better. A lot of knowledge in this problem, going a little bit fast maybe. I mean, if you've never seen this, it's probably not going to make a whole lot of sense. If you're studying this, then hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully it makes, hopefully it's a little bit helpful to you. So here, um, there's really a negative one here. So you can basically raise each factor to the nth power. So I'm going to write it like this, negative 1 to the n, x squared to the n. That's really x to the 2n because you multiply. And then here we have 9 to the n. All right, so now we're going to integrate both sides. 
So if we integrate this, okay, we, are, we don't even have to integrate it because we know what it is, right? The derivative of this function is this. So when you integrate this, you just get this function. So if I integrate this, I just get arc 10 of x over three. And then when you integrate here, you integrate term by term. So basically, all, this is a constant, and this is a constant. These, are all, these only depend on n, but here's where the x is. So you wanna use um, the power rule for integration on this piece. So this is one third infinite sum as n runs from zero to infinity. I'm just gonna put these in the front like this, negative one to the n, nine to the n. And so now we're gonna integrate this. And so basically you just add one to the exponent. So it'll be x to the two n plus one, and then you divide by the result, two n plus one. Cool, right? And then we have our constant of integration, capital C. So we should try to find C. Uh, I'm thinking we can plug in a nice value. Zero works because zero um, is in the interval. In fact, it's the center of the power series and a power series always converges at its center, but even more easily, you can see if you put a zero here, this inequality is true for x equals zero. So this equation is valid uh, for the choice of x equals zero. All right, so I'm gonna put in zero here. So we get arctan of zero. So we get arctan zero over three, which is just arctan of zero, which is zero. All of these are gonna be zero because like for the first term, you'll get zero to the one, which is zero. So they're all zero. So therefore we get zero equals C because this is zero as well, right? So the final answer is arctangent of x over three is equal to the infinite sum. So it's one third times the infinite sum as n runs from zero to infinity of negative one to the n over nine to the n. And then here we have x to the two m plus one over two m plus one Oh, there's no constant, right? So it's just, it's zero, right? So that's it. Boom, there it is, right? Fun times. Kind of a fun problem. Um, just a quick recap for you. So, you know, when you see problems like this, you know how to approach them. So when you see this problem and you're asked for a power series, this is all you know, right? This is usually what's, what's, what's given in most calculus books. This is, this is usually taught near the end uh, of a calculus two course, at least in the US. So this is what you have, and you know arctan, and you know that the derivative of arctan is this. So you know you can easily come up with a power series for this by just writing the plus as a double minus like I did. I said, okay, let's take it a step further. Let's actually write a power series for the derivative of this thing. So you took the derivative, got this, the one third comes from the chain rule. And then you basically, you use this formula to write a power series for this, okay? And then you integrate both sides. This is really easy to integrate. You don't even have to do it, right? Because you already took the derivative to get this. So if you, if you just say integrate this, you know, magically you're gonna get this. Because it, you know, the derivative of this is this, so the integral of this is this. So you don't even have to go through the work again, which is really quite nice. And then when you're integrating this one, you integrate term by term. A common source of confusion is people think that you're supposed to do something with these ends, but you're not, right? You're integrating with respect to x. So the only thing you really, all this is a constant, you just gotta focus on this one. So use the power rule, which basically says you add one and divide, and then you add your constant. And most of the time the constant is zero, but not always. So you have to pick a value to plug in. I chose zero because zero is really easy and it satisfies this inequality. So we did that and we got C equals zero, and then there's the result. And again, the radius of convergence is three. Kinda cool. I hope this video has been helpful to someone. Good luck.